Hi you guys, welcome back to Bright Violet Arts. My name is Valerie Morris and this video is all about my February 2023 bullet journal setup. So the theme I'm going with for February is very much inspired by Valentine's Day, but my twist on it is that um, I'm calling the, the theme Love Songs. And for each illustration, I'm matching it with a famous love song lyric. Uh, for the quote and it just it came together in a really cute way I thought and I had such a enjoyable time like thinking up my favorite love songs and thinking of my favorite lines so it was a blast to put this one together and I am very excited to share that process with you in this video I'm also going to demonstrate two new art supplies that I just got as Christmas gifts actually I got some watercolor pencils and I got some acrylic gouache paint and uh, they are both um, just wonderful, I think, for bullet journals. So I'll tell you about my experience with those and uh, I'll show you some of the techniques I used with them to get the illustrations for this theme. And if you recognize the lyrics from the songs that I chose for this month, if you want to explore those songs, if you're curious about them or if you recognize them and you just want to rock out, they are uh, contained in the Spotify playlist that is linked in the description box. So check that out if you wanna enjoy them along with me. So getting started on the first illustration, I uh, inked in a sketch of some cherubs and I am giving it a light uh, coloring treatment with watercolor pencils. So the ones I'm using are from Arteza and um, this is not a sponsored video. They were not gifted to me by the company. Um, my husband purchased them for me, so shout out Brian for the awesome Christmas gift. But uh, the way they work is you color on the pigment just like you would with any other colored pencil, but because the pigment is water soluble, you can add um, plain water on your brush and move the pigment around on the paper to blend your colors and just create kind of a light color wash that's very similar to watercolor. So um, I use that for everything but the flowers in the crowns on the cherubs. Um, for the flowers I used my acrylic gouache paint, which I'll talk more about in the upcoming illustrations. The first lyric is a reference to a song, it's actually the title of a song, uh, by Redbone, Come and Get Your Love. And that's been covered a million times. It was also really popular in the 90s. I think the band that did it then was um, The Real McCoy. But it's just a great classic song. And uh, I thought it was a great way to kick off the cover page. So just to keep the theme cohesive, I added a few little details and titles and washi tape. Um, the illustrations are gonna be really different this month from page to page. So to keep the theme looking kind of cohesive or intentional uh, as a unit, I just repeated the same kinds of washi tape and the same kinds of titles uh, with the pink and the red like all the way throughout. For the calendar spread, I am using a Hall and Oates song, You Make My Dreams Come True, as the lyric and I wanted a really like happy, upbeat kind of illustration to go with it so I drew some sugar cookies and the icing on these guys is the acrylic gouache paint that I mentioned. So it is a kind of a hybrid paint. It shares qualities with both gouache and acrylic. Um, the most important feature that I think it has for journaling is that it dries down completely matte. And that is similar to gouache paint, which a lot of journalers also use. Um, the difference between this and gouache is that it has a permanent finish. Gouache is, um, it can be reactivated by water even after it's dry and it can smear or flake off in journals. That has happened to me. But the acrylic wash is just as permanent as acrylic paint. So it's, it's the best of both worlds, uh, I think, for this paint. And that is the finished calendar spread. Loved that one. Um, but moving on now, this is my task and habit spread. Uh, it's got my trackers in it and I am doing a watercolor pencil illustration here that ended up being, I think, my favorite illustration out of the whole month. Uh, I really, really loved how the color went down with these watercolor pencils. So what I did for this uh, drawing of like a sunset on the water, uh, I just started layering in the pencils. I ended up coloring the majority of the picture 
all at once before I ever activated it with water. And I, I think that technique worked out pretty well. I was able to get down a base coat of color and kind of position everything so I could get the, the layout of where each color was gonna be. And then when I came back in to activate it, that showed me how much like saturation I had, how deep the color was gonna be. And what I found is that the first layer was not enough to give me the, like, the strong, deep color that I was looking for. So I just added more layers. After the first layer was completely dry, I came back in with more pencil and more water to continue blending. Um, and I did that two or three times and just added more color, you know, on top of the, the dry layers. I was careful though to clean my brush with fresh water um, in between blending different colors. Like I wouldn't drag my brush through the yellow and then straight into the blue and then back into the pink. Um, it does need to be cleaned in between each color. I'm using a white paint pen to get some ripples on the water and some clouds in the sky just to add some realism. And then I'm adding my Taylor Swift lyric here at the bottom. I am a, a big Swifty and that's one of my favorite Taylor lyrics and I thought it went really well with the uh, sunset illustration. The next spread is my first weekly layout of the month. And while I'm inking that in, I just wanna take a second to say hello and welcome to all the new subscribers that have added this channel in the last couple of months. We've had a fair amount of growth around here and that is so exciting. So thanks all you guys for uh, checking out the channel and I'll just take a second to introduce myself. My name is Valerie Morris. I'm an illustrator and a hand lettering artist, as well as an avid journaler. I bullet journal, I fitness journal, I art journal. <laughs> so uh, I spend a lot of time on this channel covering that stuff, but I also like to explore materials and techniques for the mixed media illustrations that I, I put in these journals. So I definitely am glad to be sharing all this with you. But I do want to jump back into the timeline here because right now I am putting the reflections on these red balloons with a uh, acrylic wash that's been diluted a little bit. That is going to give me the different shades for the look of a, a mylar balloon there. So that was an experiment that also went pretty well. And the quote, of course, or the lyric there is from uh, the Grease soundtrack from You're the One That I Want. I wanted to give them the look of an exposed brick wall in the background, but I didn't want the bricks to overwhelm the whole illustration, so I just drew them in partially in little clusters in the background, and I think that gave the effect that I was looking for. So there's week one finished up. For week two, I'm gonna draw in a cluster of roses, uh, just kind of in a rectangular frame here. And I'm starting off with some guidelines, kind of some wonky little circles uh, that will help me keep a roundish shape for each flower as I'm drawing in the petals and helps me place them exactly where I want them on the page. To start off a rose, I start with a spiral in the middle and then I just slowly build petals out um, going around in a, in a circular motion around the spiral. And I do like to change up the shapes for each petal so they're not like identical shapes all the way around um, because I find that just makes the outcome a little more realistic. So for these roses, I'm gonna paint them in with acrylic gouache, and I am uh, starting off with like a base coat, in this case red, and then I'm gonna mix um, a little bit of black into my red to make it darker, and I will go around the edges of each petal with that. I'm gonna come back in now with pink and go around the interior part of the petal. So this is gonna help me just get some dimension. It's not very precise in terms of shading, but it will give me dimension to my flowers, which is kind of all I'm after in this painting. And I'm doing the exact same technique here with the pink roses. I have a dark shade of pink on one side of the petal and a, a lighter shade of pink on the other. And then when all the acrylic paint is dry or the acrylic wash, I'm coming back in on the pink ones only with a white paint pen, and I'm gonna just do a little rim of white around the outer edge of each petal. I went with a, a lyric from the Etta James song, At Last, for the other side of the week two spread. 
and that finished it off. For week three, I am going to use both watercolor pencil and acrylic gouache on this illustration. So I'm just starting off with a silhouette and I'm going to do a watercolor color gradient behind it for the night sky to start off this one. There is one drawback to the watercolor pencils um, in my notebook is, is that it does buckle the page just a bit. It's not as severe as if I did a regular watercolor painting in the bullet journal, um, but it can be controlled, I guess, uh, so it doesn't bother me too much. You'll see I've got binder clips around the edge of my illustration here, and I'm doing that um, before I start each illustration so that the whole time the paper is as stretched as tight as I can get it so that it dries a little bit nicer. And also, um, whenever I mix my paint or add water to the watercolor pencils, I try to use as little water as possible. Because of course, the amount of damage to the paper is determined by how much water it has to absorb. Another big factor, though, for the performance of the paper with paint is just the quality that you start with. And um, I'm a big fan of Archer and Olive. Uh, it's actually the only brand of journals I've bought for the last three years. I am an affiliate of Archer and Olive, so if you're interested in a 10% off discount at checkout, uh, you can use my code BRIGHTVIOLETARTS10, and I will add that information to the description box as well. Jumping back into the time lapse here, um, this is the illustration for week four. And I wanted to paint some kind of a image of a cup of coffee because the lyric that I'm using is from the Bill Withers song, Lovely Day. And it talks about like waking up in the morning and you know, it's gonna be a lovely day. So for this idea, I needed a reference photo and I just Googled the search term um, romantic coffee. And I got all these pictures back of different kinds of like coffee cups and um, I love you notes and teddy bears and you know like a cup of coffee that had two different handles on it like you know all kinds of stuff like that but I found this image and I thought it was really really pretty and it would make a nice painting for week number four so I, I went for it and I, I, I think it turned out pretty cute I did have my moments with uh, painting this coffee um, I struggled with painting the foam art uh, in the middle, but um, I kind of kept at it and that's a really nice quality of acrylic gouache as well is that you can layer it over and over itself um, basically like an unlimited number of times. So here I needed to like change the, the color of the coffee cup and the color of the coffee since my background had gotten a little darker than I anticipated. But that is just part of the beauty of being able to, to layer the paint on itself is that uh, I can always paint over any mistake, which is what I'm trying to do here. I went in with a finer detail brush to see if that would help um, my ability to put this coffee art on the coffee. And I still wasn't happy with it, so I let it dry and I'm gonna come back later with a paint pen and fix it up, so I'll show you how that goes. Um, but for right now, I am going to just give everything a, a black outline to set it away from the background. And then I'm going to refine the uh, rim of the coffee cup with black and white paint pens. Um, I did find the rim of the cup to be the most challenging part, even more so than the coffee foam. Uh, just because it is hard to get you know, a perfect ellipse like that with uh, a pen, you know, you have to have a very steady hand. Um, but I did refine that coffee foam with the white paint pen and it looked a lot better. And finally I'm putting in the song lyric uh, from the Bill Withers song. And here is a final look at the week four spread in its completion. For the last week of the month, I am drawing in some champagne and strawberries. So I was uh, not sure which, which paint to use for this illustration initially because I thought since the glass and the champagne inside were both transparent that the watercolor pencils were going to be best. But the more I thought about it and the more I looked at the reference photo that I had, which was just like a still life photo um, 
from somewhere on the internet and uh, I started looking at all the different shades and colors that were in the glass and in the champagne and I realized that um, it was going to be easier for me to get control of all those different like subtle shades uh, if I used the acrylic wash because I knew that I could just paint over um, any areas that weren't you know the, the way I wanted them uh, up until I was done with it so that was kind of the, the tactic that I took with it it was sort of a take no prisoners approach to painting but uh, it, it turned out pretty cute and I just took my time with it and paid a lot of attention to what I was seeing in the reference photo and just tried to match those shades. Um, like for example, when I stared really close at the top of the glass, like above the champagne line um, of these flutes, I noticed it was not exactly white, it was just different shades of a warm gray. So I tried to mix similar colors and just paint them in, in the stripe pattern that I saw in my reference photo. I did love these strawberries so much. I thought they were so cute when they were all finished. And my technique for getting the reflections on the strawberries was just to dilute the paint and let the colors kind of run together on the surface of the paper. For painting the leaves, I mixed up three colors of green and uh, that is gonna give me a highlight and a low light or you know, a highlight and a shadow for each leaf and that's gonna help with the dimension. Uh, here I'm using a gel pen, um, a Moonlight Yellow Jelly Roll pen, uh, to dot the seeds. And I realized, of course, those seeds were way too big when I just put the gel pen on. But then I covered back over it with some diluted red paint and it softened the appearance of the seeds so that they uh, looked more realistic. I'm just using a marker to add bubbles to the dry paint surface of my champagne glasses and a few highlights on the glass and they're all finished. And then um, probably the, the best quote of the whole month uh, from the song Higher and Higher by Jackie Wilson uh, for, for the last page here. And that is going to do it for uh, the February setup. Let's go through a quick flip through. So if you have made it to this point in the video, I would love it if you left a strawberry emoji in the comments so that I know, you know who you are and uh, that, you, that you stuck around. And uh, also if you have any questions or feedback that you would like uh, to share in the comments, that is encouraged as well. I will certainly make an effort to reply uh, to any questions or anything that comes up. And if you're looking for work in progress photos or a sneak peek at next month's theme, you can usually find all that stuff in my Instagram stories. And over there I am at Bright Violet Arts if you want to come check it out. So thanks again for watching the video and happy journaling!